we are growing in the speed of 30% per annum. This is not really the same speed as we see the ind other industries that we need in order to make this happen growing. In this video, I want to provide commentary on an online webinar where Talga and Norvolt have talked about the bottlenecks to the European battery supply chain. And as usual, this video is not financial advice or recommendation for you to do anything. It's just general information for entertainment purposes. So the speaker you're going to hear from in just a second is Hannah Sweets, and she's the director of raw materials in Norvolt. Now, Norvolt is a battery manufacturing company that was started by two ex-Tesla employees, and one of them was the global head of supply chain that helped launch the Model S. On top of that, Norvolt is funded by Volkswagen amongst other companies, and they have recently signed a $14 billion deal to be the lead supplier for Volkswagen for the next 10 years when it comes to battery cells. So I think it's fair to say that Norvolt is pretty important in the European battery supply chain. And as usual, this video is not financial advice or recommendation for you to do anything. It's just general information for entertainment purposes. I think this one is really interesting and this is really a challenge that, that we want to share with the, the, the mining industry. If you look at this graph to the left one, uh, you can see the annual growth uh, annual growth of the battery industry. Uh, so it's a growth of about 30% per year. This means that 2030, we have a need of 565 uh, gigawatt hours in Europe only. Northvolt wants to take about 25% of this share. So that equals 150 uh, gigawatt hours. So that means three to four, of the factories that we are building now in Sheleftu. As you can see to the right, this is really driven by the automotive industry. They are the largest driver in this. I think when I listened to some presentations earlier today, what I think is really the challenge here is that we are growing in the speed of 30% per annum. This is not really the same speed as we see the ind other industries that we need in order to make this happen growing. So, I mean, when we discussed earlier the challenge in the, in the European industry with, with permits, with mining permits, it cannot take that long as it does because to grow something 30% per annum will need so much more than, than what they are supplying. Firstly, the 30% growth per year is not a surprise because we know that besides China, Europe is the second fastest growing EV market. Then Hannah's comment about needing more materials is one of the reasons why I think major car makers are trying to lock in supply for their raw materials right now. Because whoever can lock in supply will probably enjoy better margins in the future, not having to deal with future shortfalls or price fluctuations. That is part of my thesis in Talga Group and the lithium companies I talked about in my renewable stocks video. So feel free to check out that video after this one. If you look to the left, you can see a reference battery. So this is how many kilos of CO2 emissions you have per kilowatt hour in a produced cell. So this reference was taken about two years ago. So two years ago, uh, of course, the batteries were produced only in Asia. So this is an Asian reference battery. What Northwell is doing to produce the greenest battery is of course localizing in a grid that is very green. By doing this, we can reduce the emissions by 50%. So if you look at this middle column here, middle bar, our emissions come a little bit from, from the grid, uh, even though it's still only hydro, but the majority of it, absolute majority, of our emission is coming from the raw materials we are using. So this is really where we need the mining industry to help us with solutions to improve this even and further. Uh, what we are doing in this is partly, of course, working with the right suppliers, selecting our suppliers, trying to motivate our suppliers to perform even better uh, when it comes to CO2. We are localizing some suppliers next to us uh, that today only produce their products in Asia. That will also help quite a lot. Of course, we want to see more European projects. The sustainability in European projects is not only in the carbon uh, footprint, also in other areas, so of course, but that, that is what we are doing. But this is also where we definitely need the mining industry to help us. And they will help us to bring the solution to, to come to these, these good numbers for, for CO2. For EU to go carbon neutral by 2050, the entire value chain from mining, processing to battery manufacturing and car making all needs to seriously consider their carbon footprint. A lot of battery cells made in Asia are not using renewable energy. So imagine the pressure coming from EU to source materials with a lower carbon footprint. Even transporting the materials from Asia has a considerable footprint. 
Just a bit of food for thought. The main Norfolk production facility is in northern Sweden. Do you know who's their neighbor who are producing locally mined anode powered by renewable energy? Yep, you guessed it, Taugugu. It makes sense location-wise, carbon footprint-wise, and it's cost competitive. So I'm hoping that Norfolk is at least considering the neighbor. Yeah, it's no secret, of course, about the burgeoning interest in batteries and the incredible growth in plans to build more. As just mentioned in the introduction, what is not well understood is approximately half of the volume of the batteries are actually a material called graphite for anodes. That's the existing technology and the bulk far away, the largest part of the anode solutions for most of the plant production. Um, but there's an issue. This anode material is undergoing great growth, but currently 100% of it is imported. Uh, right now, you have about 60,000 tonnes a year within Europe, and this needs to increase by 10 times over the next nine years. And that was before the, of course, very recent announcement by Volkswagen and Northvolt regarding their plans as well. So there is a, a, a very clear dire need to have this material. So that's the business opportunity, shall we say. Dire need indeed. Like Mark says, all of the anode material is currently imported from elsewhere. So for EU to have a self-sustaining supply chain, they'll need to localize as much as they possibly can in the future. That's why the ERT Inno Energy, who is funded by the EU, are writing checks to European projects like Vulcan Energy to help speed up the localized battery supply chain. So if one was to propose what would make a good anode for lithium ion batteries uh, that's made from graphite, there are three things to look out for. One is that it would be based on natural materials where the energy to graphitize the carbon has been done by mother nature. And so you have uh, savings on energy compared to coal and oil-based synthetic graphite, which is currently the case today. You would also be using hydropower or some other form of sustainable electricity, and it would be have a short supply chain. As we saw with COVID earlier on this year, the supply chains are extremely uh, limited in their capacity to deal with disruptions. And specifically for this material, the current supply chain is actually extremely dirty, I would say, when it comes to emissions. Currently, most of the material that's imported from Asia is synthetic. It contains approximately 90 times the CO2 emissions of what natural material would be produced in North Sweden. So overall, this is what Talga is doing. We are building a supply of anodes. We are actually producing the material that would be used directly by a battery company. We're producing it locally. We have plans to build an electric vehicle anode plant, which is under, getting underway now in Luleå in Sweden. And our plan would be to have a vertically integrated project where we mine uh, graphite from the Kurina, concentrate it, and then purify and form the anodes um, near Lulio in Sweden. That is the existing plan. However, there are other aspects of Telga's work in, in the Nordics to make this even bigger in future, which is we're also a technology company. We have our own anode technologies, including silicon, and solid state uh, where we have anodes for those sorts of batteries so that as they grow with our customers we do too i would say though in in the final that it's actually at the moment faster to build a battery factory than it is to build the plant that makes the materials for the battery factory i think now is a time when we've heard a lot today about leadership from the Arctic in the supply of materials and making this Green Deal happen. But I think there has been a lot of words and it's time for more action, frankly. Uh, it is not a done deal. While the capital markets are hoping put some funds towards these things, frankly, it is a longer process to build these supply chains than it is, as I said, to build a battery factory. So we would now look to the same support that these large companies get uh, with battery factories and automotives. That also has to apply to SMEs unless you want these supply chains to uh, not be built in time and continuously be relying on fully imported materials, which unfortunately is currently extremely high, high emission. And so to enable truly greener batteries, we must enable a greener supply chain. I wonder if Mark is referring to the long permitting process that SMEs like Talga and Vulcan Energy have to go through in order to start producing materials. 
Actually, Bo Nomach, the industrial strategy executive in the EIT Inno Energy, who evaluates the regulatory environment for the energy sector, shared the same sentiment. Well, uh, I would say one thing that we've heard there are a lot of opportunities actually in, in the Nordic region for developing minerals and also processed material. However, which we are going to talk about cell production here. I think the last uh, speaker nailed it quite well. It's much, much faster to build cell factories. And I will come back to that if you look at the uh, activity there. Uh, I, I think that um, people don't, I have not understood the time cr crunch to make these things happen. Thank you. I would like to continue on that, the bottlenecks. Uh, you're a part of the European Battery Alliance. And uh, what would you say are the, uh, or is the main uh, bottleneck to the European battery value chain? In 2016, when the Battery Alliance was kicked off, there was no battery, uh, lithium-ion battery production in Europe. This is the current map where you can see there are 11 plants in operation or under construction. There are another 13 plants, battery cell plants planned or that was uh, until the day before yesterday when Volkswagen added four more. So now we have 17 plants. So altogether we are talking about 28 cell plants in Europe. And when we analyze this plant could produce um, about, I mean, 350 gigawatt hours by 2025, and maybe up to the double amount in 2030. It's absolutely clear where the shortage is. It's in the raw materials and it's in the process material, it's in anode, it's in cathode, everything that is upstream is short. So the bottleneck is the raw materials in different forms, right? Absolutely, no, no, no doubt. Having someone like Bo and Norvolt pressuring the EU, maybe, just maybe, they'll start speeding up the permitting process. And personally speaking, a lot of the points the speakers have made, I think are tailwinds for Talga. The next couple of years is going to be really interesting in the EU because they know that they can't rely on the imported materials from Asia, but what are they willing to do to build a self-sustaining supply chain? So thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. If you want to support the channel, not to mention access to additional content pieces and be part of my fortnightly Q&A, consider supporting the channel via Patreon. Nevertheless, if you have learned something new, remember to gently smack the like button right there, subscribe to my channel so that when I release future videos, you be the first one to know. Until next time, my name is David. Otto will always do the honors and see you very, very soon.